In 2012, an internet user discovered a mysterious entrance to the inside of a highway bridge. Within the dark, cramped spaces, they discovered a disturbing scene. But despite their fears, this internet user returned for more clues as to who or what was residing within the structure. Today, we dissect the many stories and photos left behind of the bridge. This is Red Web. Welcome back, Task Force, to another episode of Red Web, the podcast all about mysteries, true crime, unsolved, and everything in between. I am your resident mystery enthusiast, losing his voice as he speaks, Trevor Collins, joining me, hearing this mystery for the very first time, potentially on the cusp of his own illness, Alfredo Diaz. This is very true. We have all been secreting ectoplasm mm -hmm. within <laughs> our, 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 our nasal cavities. <laughs> And it is affecting our voices here at Red Web. So you're saying I'm I'm haunted, but in the head. But like, <laughs> more specifically, in your nose. My sinus mm. cavities are haunted like an 18th century attic. Yes, <laughs> and it's just leaking like an 18th it century is. pipe. It's, well, yup, yup. These are some lead pipes, though. The water comes out sweet. Let me just say this. I got some nice throat coat. It's helping me out. <laughs> Gave Fredo a nice idea or a good name, <laughs> Throat Goat. Just going to put that one on the table. I think Red Web needs a, a nice, healthy drink, may, maybe tea or coffee with Goat Man on it. I don't know. <laughs> like the official drink of Red Web. Called, and, uh, you know, we got Throat Goat. People got Red energy Web coffee. Do people got energy drinks and we have Throat Goat <laughs> coffee. <laughs> and it's got an ominous Goat Man on the front. I mean, I don't know how, how much clearer and more enticing it could be. Does it have goat milk in it? Oh, God, it go does. On the it's goat? Okay. mostly milk. <laughs> oh mm, yeah. mm. It's so good. Well, Task Force, like, Task Force can't really complain because if it's something that we create, we supply, you know at Task Force HQ, it's free and it's flowing. Right, <laughs> right. And most of the job apps we get... <laughs> Are after those bennies, okay? Number one benny, <laughs> flowing throat is that goat. Number one benny, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but with that said, this is I'm so uh, happy to be returning to form the core DNA to this podcast, Internet Mysteries. Again, I'm pushing my voice. I, I hope it's not going to be a, a an aural disturbance to everybody. But man, this one is fascinating, and it's and it's kind of brief. It's kind of like a nice little airy but spooky mystery that was left on the internet. So I'm so all about this and that's just because it was i think november or so i saw a tiktok and it was of these people that were in a mall oh. and went into they oh. saw an abandoned part of the mall went into the abandoned part of the mall and then saw all these abandoned stores then crawled under like a certain like little duck thing and then ended up in these giant Endless long concrete hallways that were yeah. well lit. Oh yeah, and I then saw this. All that, and then there was all these offices with blueprints of like the building, and then mm -hmm. followed that, and then there was like a whole parking abandoned parking structure way underground. And so I was sitting here going like, that is wild. Also, if we were ever to go exploring and it wasn't like for uh, a scary haunted place or a cryptid. I don't know how you even find places like this, right. but exploring places like that, that would be wild for us to do. Yeah. It was literally like the the game, The Back Rooms. Yeah. It was just yeah. all these abandoned rooms that were just are endless. And I was like, whoa. And now we're doing this. So I'm all about it. <laughs> it's very urban exploring or whatever. Yes. I think that's what it's called. Urban, urban exploration. Yep. And uh, it's, it's very us, right? I, yeah. Was there a room full of rabbits down there? We don't know. Were there <laughs> perfect clones of everybody up top on the, on the, Living surface? Oh. Maybe. Uh, we don't know. But it's because of stories and places like that, abandoned places that are just built upon, yeah. that a lot of theories exist. Of course, Jordan Peele used that for us, but there's a whole other episode topic. I won't say here, because I don't want to spoil for you, but that I got to bring to Christian and Jillian, because mm. there's a, a topic that has been rekindled in my mind that is similar to that, but a more historic sense. Anyway, with the tease of another idea, I think... Let's talk about this bridge. Mm -hmm. And before I begin, as always, a list of sensitive topics will be in the description because this one gets wild. On May 12th, 2012, a now deleted user on Reddit, Nobility Scooter, posted on the subreddit called Let's Not Meet. This subreddit revolves around true stories of scary personal experiences. It's not one of those places where people go, uh, just suspend your disbelief. It is more of a, I experienced this, here's my story. The title was simply The Bridge. 
Nobility Scooters said that they were from North Wales and described it as a wonderful place to live, one that offered them a lot of chances to explore isolated areas, such as the countryside and the coastline, etc. If you don't know, Wales is a part of Great Britain. Beautiful place. Now, a few years before their Reddit post, the author and their friends were exploring the northern coastline along a dual highway. Not far from the Rainbow Bridge, a walking bridge with rainbow lights at night, and north of the village called Old Colwyn, they found an overpass train bridge that the group decided to try and explore via a nearby manhole. They, they basically saw a square manhole cover protruding up from the ground like a, a small cement silo, hatch on the top, and they're like, well, we think this might be the entrance to whatever is going on in this bridge. Interesting that the manhole cover is, like, open. Not open, but they did They did pry it open. Oh, they pried it open. Yeah, they used tools to unbolt it and then found like, kind of like square pieces of metal protruding from the wall, little handholds so you could climb down. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sure this mostly exists for either A, maintenance, or B, while the bridge was being constructed, yeah. you could have access to the inner workings. But otherwise, one wouldn't expect to go in there except if you're curious and want to explore weird places. Yeah. So they crawled in, and they believed this was the main part of the bridge, and they shimmied their way through this tight space, sometimes scratching their stomachs. So picture this, like a crawl space. Oh, no. It's so small that you can't really crouch. Yep. So you kind of have to crawl a little bit mm -hmm. and go up. There's, like, cement beams going across every now and then, so you kind of have to go over those, which require you to slide on your stomach. But it was up and down, something between, like, a crawling spot and a, a very stooped stand. Like, there wasn't a uh, lot of space. Yeah, I don't like that. Like, people that do gate, cave, cave diving and stuff like that. Oh, my God. Spelunking? Spelunking. But, like, where your head is yep. pressed between the ceiling and floor? Yeah, no. come on, man. Why? Especially when there's a puddle in there. Uh, yep. Yeah. No. I saw a video on that recently, and I went, nah. Nah, I'm good. I've seen videos on TikTok, and, like, people are like, I got stuck. Hold on. Let me just... And then they're like... they. They blow their breath out, they shrink their chest, yeah. and then they're like, no, no, still a little stuck. Their arms way back, wedged behind their oh, body. And I'm my. just like, how yeah. are you calm? Why? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you know have what? no other option but to be calm. If right? you want that sensation, I say wrestling, where you can tap out. Yeah. You're like, wow, I conquered it. And you're like, yeah, you were being pinned down by about 10 miles of rock. Or just get a bunch of U-Haul boxes, put them together, and then just crawl through them. <laughs> <laughs> crawl through them, yeah. Uh, claustrophobia. No, I mean, I'm sure there's some sort of adrenaline from the other side of all that but ugh, yeah just not for me so anyway they're they're crawling through these tight spaces and i'll go ahead and get ahead of myself there's a lot of photos from within from varying journeys into this inner um bridge hell yes hell we'll yes. show you some of those task force as always they're going to be on our social at red web pod you don't need to see them in order to enjoy this very intriguing mystery but it's nice to have as you say tangible evidence That's of this saying, story man like nowadays every phone has a camera and every and every camera's got a phone every camera's got a phone and those cameras are like 48 megapixels this sounds like so many megapixels there's 48 oh, oh, of them oh so many so many pixels for you and i'm like man everyone wants to record everything and so i'm very happy to know that there's a ton of photos yeah so they went down there, they're crawling around, they're scooching, they're sliding, and then they see what they think is an object, kind of towards what they assumed was the midway point of this bridge. So they kind of push on. You're looking at the photos now. Get in there. Yeah, so I, I mean, I see the bridge, and then, yeah, I see kind of the top of it. Oh, come on, man. Mm -hmm. this, is, they, they have a, this, is, this is awesome. You There's literally like an HD shot of like... The hole that they unbolted, like the, the cover that they unbolted, mm -hmm. and then the hole that goes down. Yeah, you want to crawl down in there? It's, you, you can't see yeah. past like 10 feet. It's Turn so dark. brightness all the way. So yeah. this is from a, a future photo shoot, but it, it gives you a visual of what's going on. You can see on the bottom rung someone's hand faintly, and then from their wrist down, they're so in the dark, you can't see them. It, this is so dark, and it's so, it's way down there. Yeah. And yeah, the crawl spaces are tight. I mean, people have been in there because there's some tagging on the walls, but yeah, this is pretty old and abandoned. Yeah. So once they were in the other side of the bridge, the group found something that made them very uncomfortable. There was a single fold-out chair facing the wall, like directly at the wall. On the wall was a magazine clipping of a naked woman in an erotic pose that appeared somewhat sinister, to quote Nobility Scooter. The woman's eyes were cut out with precision. 
perhaps an, an exacto knife or box cutter, just something to cut out the eyes specifically. Now, I guess this reminds me, if you are going to go stumbling into these uh, photos, we're not gonna post the ones that are a little bit more erotic, but there are some nude photos within the confines of these photo albums. Got it, yeah. Because of what is in. Because it took photos of everything. Right. So just, you know, viewer discretion is advised. If you're going to go perusing some of these photos, there's also some other kind of more gross items. So just a, a broad warning to anybody looking at these. And while I'm talking about photos, Task Force, I also want to kind of give a heads up to you guys. You've noticed this already, so I just want to address it. We've had to take photos out of the video version of the podcast, which I always appreciated having because it just kind of gives it right to you. That was one of the values of having the video version. But candidly, we've had to take those away because of legal issues. We don't want to offer any sort of vectors for anybody to sue us for using their imagery or what have you. There's a lot of conversations that we're having behind the scenes in order to figure out what options we do have because this does honestly kind of constrain us a little bit. But, you know, when you work with a lot of other amazing content creators in a big company, it just creates opportunity for people to kind of come after you. And so while we see a bunch of our peers able to do like show images and react to things, we want to make sure that we're completely kosher and like get approval and all of these things. And, and it becomes difficult when posts are many years old or come from a thousand different people and sources, or in this case, when the Reddit user has their account deleted. So again, as always, if you want to check out some of these photos, head to our social at redwebpod and we can hand those out there or link them. But otherwise, unfortunately, for the time being, you won't see as many visual assets in the video podcast. Sorry about that. Now, as they continue to look around this chair, they see these photos, they saw a condom that appeared to be covered in blood. Almost immediately, they turned back around and crawled out as quickly as possible. Nobility Scooter wrote that they thought this was incredibly strange due to the fact that these towns in Wales are all pretty tight-knit, very small, that everybody in these towns kind of knew one another, to the point where there was a homeless person living in the town, just one person, and when they passed away, the entire town came to their funeral. Aww. So it would be kind of wild for someone to go missing without the entire town kind of catching wind of it or for someone to have peculiar habits or odd living quarters, it was just kind of known that everyone knew everyone's business, kind right. of. Right. But I mean, maybe that's why this person has a masturbation vault. It's possible. You know? Um, they want to keep that secret from the town. Yeah, they're going to great lengths to be like, yeah, this is where I do my business. I will say, it's, it's, it's weird on a different level. You go down there and maybe you see blood, or maybe there was a crime or something like that. But to see something like so sexual, but with like a weird sinister twist to it, I don't like. How do you approach? You know what I mean? Like, if we were going ghost hunting, we saw that. I don't even know how to react. What right. to say? What to do? It's just so off of like the map of what your mind is on. Oh yeah, and what like you're expecting to see. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. It's such a weird thing to see in such an ominous place. Yep. 100%. Now, of course, this post, as I mentioned earlier, was years after they went into this bridge. So they're looking back, Nobility Scooter, with hindsight, and they're thinking, well, this scene was so disturbing, I probably should have contacted police, but of course they didn't. They also felt that they were potentially brave enough at the time of the posting to potentially revisit this site. Most of the comments on the thread were begging for an update. Some even described their own adventures while in Wales, but basically saying, please go back. If you're if you're brave enough, let's see it. Wait, like people actually went to so the place? Like other people had other experiences and adventures across Wales. I don't know if they were similar uh, or different, but basically like, hey, while we're talking about Wales, I also saw something strange. Got it, okay. Just, just the nature of that particular yeah. subreddit. So now we flash forward to two days later, two days after the post, which again was years after the initial bridge yeah, exploration. So it's been a while. This was on May 14th. Nobility Scooter edited their original post to include an Imgur album of the bridge after going back with a new group of friends. That's the one that you were kind of perusing just there. And now I encourage you to kind of scroll through all of them because we're about to describe this revisit of the site. This new group though, I should say, was unfamiliar with this location. They were unfamiliar with Nobility Scooter's goals. They didn't realize the full extent of this project. So you're mostly going to see photos taken from the entrance and less so photos taken deeper within. Got it. Yeah, I'm just, just quick scrolls. It just looks like the entrance and then also a bunch of just like random trash that they found. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm sure like people go. I mean, like I said, there's tagging on the wall, so people probably went down there to hang out, drink, tag. You know what I mean? Bold to go back. Yeah. I mean, at least I went back and forth. It seems like you know what I mean. So you got a bunch of people. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Some Actually. really creepy photos here. I mean, it, what stands out to me, and I'll bring this around in the, in the theories, but it starts out sepia tone, then it goes to a really high contrast black and white, then it goes to a, a normal like color photo looking down the like square manhole but then after that you see like a photo in pitch black with a sliver of light and then that same sliver of light with a flash basically showing how dark it is but yeah it's interesting to see so many different I mean, these looks are, not only do we have high-res photos but they even got st they're stylized yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is like when do we ever get this it just feels weird. Like, this is 2012. So, yeah, everyone's kind of got smartphones at this point. The photos aren't great, but photo taking photos is way more accessible. So it's either that, A, yeah, they, they put a filter on each of these for some reason, or B, they had three different cameras and kind of kept swapping between them. Yeah, I don't I know. I mean, 2012, you still have what, like, I mean, Canon 7Ds were popular. Yeah. You know, so people were rocking those. It could be someone that's literally all about photography. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. Now, looking at this first photo, you can kind of see from the outside what I'm talking about. And for those listening, I'll describe it. But you basically see the side of a bridge, very standard overpass looking bridge. You might see this driving under a bridge on the highway. Now, at one of the supports, one of the concrete beams that stands up to support it, there's kind of a, a, a depression where the bottom of the bridge comes down in a slight triangular pattern. This is the cavity in which that folded chair is sitting. So you kind of see oh, where that, that void is. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So they crawled in on one of the sides and then shuffled their way through the, the thin underbelly of the bridge. And then yeah. at that depression, that's where someone kind of put up this little makeshift home or something. Weird. You just yeah. hear all the cars pass above you. Or the trains. Oh, yeah. There's cars nearby. There is a road yeah. nearby. Okay. But train bridge is what we're in. Now, it's worth mentioning we did look on Google Maps to try to find this bridge and try to find the entrance. And it was, there was no imaginable way in. So it's hard to, to know if this is the accurate location. That's another thing I want to flag for my own personal theory at the very end. But as you saw, the manhole is more, is more of a man's square, as Jillian said. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a steel hatch that lifts up rather than a, like a iron round manhole plug. Yeah, what you normally traditionally think with like Ninja Turtles, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so definitely feels very industrial. And it was so dark, Nobility Scooter described it as, quote, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. The ladder, again, very small, kind of metal horseshoe style pieces of metal in the wall. Yep. Very precarious crawl down and up, but the passageways, suffice to say, are very dark. I think we covered that pretty nicely, but they do open up creepily in, in these photos. You can see into the void within the bridge. Now, no one would go with Nobility Scooter into those spaces. So eventually, Nobility Scooter found a different group willing to accompany them on their journey back to the other side of the bridge to actually go deeper into the bridge. And I say group, but I believe, Christian, it was just an individual. I, we don't know okay. for sure. Okay. Because, yeah, it says group, but based on comments from the threads and whatnot, it may have just been one person. So yeah. not really sure. They kind of refer to one person in particular, but it yeah. could have been a group. Okay. Wow. So he had smart friends. Friends are <laughs> right. like, I'm not going back. <laughs> right. I'm not going back to go deeper. Now that you explain the assignment, <laughs> right. I'm thinking no. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. Yeah. It's good to hear that people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So 15 days now. Since the original post, it's May 27th, 2012, Nobility Scooter posted in a new thread on Let's Not Meet called The Bridge Revisited. The night before, on May 26th, Nobility Scooter and his single friend visited the bridge. They described it as, quote, uninhabitable, noting the smell, the high amount of dust, and the vulnerable feeling navigating the cramped tunnel. You would basically expose yourself to anybody hiding in there as you were trying to get back there. Right. Tons of hidey holes and tons of other like nefarious corners that would just give you the, the heebie-jeebies. So that's where the second photo album comes into play. I'll let you take a peek at that, but you're going to see kind of what I'm about to describe. So go ahead and scroll through those as I describe some of their photos. Yeah, um, 
lots of random stuff, like a used candle, a broken lock, or I guess just like mm -hmm, an open mm -hmm. padlock, some rope. Yep. Um, Found a lot of trash. There was yeah, that piece of foam of, and of sheets. Trash stuff. But uh, a bag with loads of human feces. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a poop bag, I guess. A little poop bag. It's like, it was like someone living down here? Yeah, and it's worth noting that the saying... smell was commented on. He didn't re true. He didn't recall that from the first time. A few of these yeah. items are new since they last were there. But someone's been coming here. Yeah. So, and they also found some trash, you know, a makeshift bed, well, not stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Now, again, it was so dark that they could not see the other end of the tunnel, and they were uncertain at this point if somebody was actively in there. Because, again... They hadn't noted this smell previously, and luckily, as they went through, there was nobody waiting for them on the other side, but that was incredibly dangerous. That said, they immediately saw a knife that wasn't there during Nobility Scooter's first visit to this site. Eerily, there was also some crime scene tape left behind in there. They have a photo of both of those. In addition to that, they had some other images. There was a poster of a woman with her pelvis burned by a cigarette, other posters on the ground, one from the year 1997, one for the band Catatonia. There was a brush, some scissors, the same chair that he saw the very first visit, and a red blanket. They noticed, too, that the condom seen on their initial trip was missing from the site. We cleaned up. So something's changing. This this feels like it's an active space now. Yeah, someone's coming here and like kind of like loosely living in it and being there. I feel like it's either someone without a home or... Maybe it's a go-to spot for someone that doesn't have like a, a safe household. It's very dangerous to go in a place like this, though. Yeah, because you're I mean you're not dealing with and we talk a lot about like cryptids and and like um, spectral entities and whatnot. This is like real people type stuff, right? Like you're dealing with humans and like in a place where normally a human wouldn't go. So there's a lot of unpredictability to deal to deal with. This feels like someone's secret. Yeah. And you don't really want to play around with someone's secret, right? True. Especially given the nature of this particular place. Yeah. Um it 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 provides a very obvious ominous ambiance. So I don't I don't know if that necessarily implies this person is nefarious or sinister in some sort of way, but I can't help but feel that way. I wouldn't go treading lightly. It's just a weird place to meet someone, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I uh, like if you're the person that normally goes there, right, or the person that is going there, either way, when those two sides meet, there's instantly tension. Oh, yeah. Like, Why are right you off, here? Off the jump. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? What this are you is, doing here? Yeah. And so, yeah. On top of that, too, and this wasn't mentioned in the, the first visit, wasn't mentioned in the kind of like second visit where they just went into the entrance. But as you can see in some of the flash photos, it is very dusty. Yeah. They commented on that. Like, it was hard to take flash photography because it would be so dusty that all the dust would light it up. Yeah. Which is a good opportunity for a, a PSA here in the winter. If it's snowing, don't put your brights on. It's not going to help you see. It's going to make it way worse. Oh, I never, like, lived and dealt with the snow. So. It just lights up all the snow. That makes so, so it makes much it harder more, to see. That makes so much more sense. Yeah. And it blinds people driving at you. It's just so many city drivers so you, love their brights. Anyway. So you just don't turn your lights on or... Well, that's what those like lower lights are for. Oh, usually, like fog lights. Yeah, fog lights to illuminate the road, help got you see that. It. Normal lights. I mean, you got to see. But anyway, just a little micro PSA. But talking about the dust, though, the two going into this place, at least Nobility Scooter said, it would be a hazard to be in there for very long without a mask. That's yeah. just how dusty it was. It was like snowing within this bridge. It was. It was very strange. Now, again, for the sake of my own personal theory, I want to flag one item. Some of, not all of them, but the initial burst of dusty photos, all the dust is falling directly down. And so to me, it's almost like the dust is being disturbed off the ceiling or in some way being manually introduced into the scene. So that way, as it cascades down, it's not drifting in circular patterns and everywhere this way and that. Yeah. There are, each of them has like a pretty, like a motion blur, like vertically down. It's yeah. all in the same direction as if it's falling and falling fast-ish. That or it's a long exposure and the dust is all drifting in one direction. Either mm -hmm. way, there was something almost manufactured about that that I just wanted to flag as we're kind of noodling on what's going on in here. I don't know. I'll, I'll kind of come back to this with my own take, my own theory. Well, here. thing too, you, you, like you said, it was like a train overpass, right? Mm -hmm. So 
it's not like there's a bunch of cars going over it and constantly just rattling the bridge for and right. shaking dust down. Like, yeah. But then again, there are some photos later on. The dust is dusting. It's coming at the camera. It is swirling. It's going sideways. It's going all different directions. But in more photos than not, the dust is all going in the same direction. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just going to flag that. So their friend tagged their username, Nobility Scooter, on the wall in 2012 as the year on the wall as well. And then they left as quickly as they could. They can't stand this dust. They're they're creeped out. Whatever. Let's get out of here. There's a knife. Let's not come back. In total, Nobility Scooter and their friend were in the tunnel for about an hour to an hour and a half. Oh, my God. Yeah. And in the comments, they said they believed whoever else visited the bridge must be a local. But given the years in one of the magazines, it could have been over a decade before that they visited. So we don't really have a timeline. I'm trying to isolate one in and we'll kind of circle around to that smell. The yeah, human there's, feces there's smell. new stuff that came into play since the first time yeah. they visited. Yeah. But this group vowed to never return to the bridge again. Ten years later, in 2022, another Redditor decided to venture into this bridge. On December 25th of all days, Reddit user Psychological Road 650 shared in a different subreddit, the Creepy Stories subreddit, that the bridge was real and that they had been there. They said they too lived in North Wales in the small town of Conway, about seven to eight miles west of the bridge. They claimed that the bridge was like a legend in their town. They said that they found the story had made its way to a creepy Reddit iceberg of some form and were surprised that anyone outside their small town was aware of it. An iceberg we've done on, yeah. on case files before. Basically, it's a, a deep dive on a certain topic where above on the top of the iceberg is the commonly known stuff and the deeper you go into the water, the more ambiguous, the more ominous, the, the lesser known. So somebody had put this story on a Reddit iceberg and that's how they found out. Now, interestingly... They too had visited the bridge years before their post. They said that two years prior to posting, they had visited the bridge and they wrote that the dust was like, quote, a snowstorm and described the tunnel as similar to the one that, in the movie Barbarian. If you oh, remember that one. I remember that movie. It was like a house in Detroit, kind of an abandoned neighborhood. They're living in this Airbnb or they're staying at this Airbnb yeah. and doors start moving. Something gets found. There's an ominous tunnel. So picture that tunnel. Yeah. Ugh. That was one of the very, uh, one, very terrifying. Two, the movie did a great job of giving you a trailer that didn't give it away, which yep. a lot of movies give it away nowadays. Right. Ba-ba. So you, <laughs> yep. Ba-ba. You go in and you're like, okay, this is some weird type of movie. And you go, yeah. oh, it's not that. It's more than that. It's oh, something yeah. else. By the time you get through the teasings of the trailer, you're yeah. like, it's been only 10 minutes. Yeah. We got a whole movie ahead. Yeah. It's so good. You pretty, yeah, you pretty much go through the trailer of the movie within like 10 minutes. You go, yeah. what the hell else is it's there? It's so good. So yeah, they, they said basically everything was exactly as described by Nobility Scooter. In fact, oh, my favorite part of that, about this, this mystery like, here. There's like fact checking and everything. This fact is, checking. It's got it all. Yeah. And then on top of that, they posted within their story a video of them going there. Oh. So there is a video. Oh, we got everything. Yeah. Of them kind of poking around, seeing, seeing some of the same things. They have a video of the tag. So Nobility Scooter 2012 was tagged on the wall. It's all true. Um, but while you pull up that video, this group also said that they left quickly, but Psychological Road 650 said that they would go back if they could find someone else to go with them. So they went alone. Come on, man. All Don't the way back that. in there. Yeah, I mean, here's just a vertical video of them, I guess, climbing up and out. They were, wow, it is like a damn dust storm. Yeah. It's so dusty in there. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's like, it's like a wind tunnel, essentially. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's the chair. Got it all, man. It's it's all there. There's, yeah. Whoa, it's so cool having high-res photos and videos. Like, dang, I really hope this is a future of mysteries. Right, right. That Like, we crowdsource this stuff. It feels like I'm, you're in it. But also, don't go to these places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not also alone, don't, especially. don't do that. So they also posted within, like, it left a comment of their story. And uh, so you can go read all the details if you want. But I'll jump to some of the highlights. They advise not going. Certainly not alone, but basically saying, don't go into the tunnel. When they had their, their torch light on or a flashlight, it basically illuminated nothing. There's a photo or a, or a piece of video where they show what the flashlight 
being on looks like and what a flash photo looking at that flashlight looks like. They said everything was there, everything from the erotic imagery to the chair. They said that they saw a surgical blade slash knife on the magazine pages, that it had some small brown splotches on it, something that was once a liquid. It sounds very much like dried blood. Yeah. Unfortunately, and this is what I want to flag, there's a couple details within this paragraph. One, as always, with these mysteries, it's like a meme now, they lost half their footage. Oh, oh, oh. They also said we were scared, so I misspoke. They might have had somebody else with them. But basically, they wanted to get a cute photo of them in the chair. And they say, of course, of course I wanted that for some reason. I would not sit in that chair. No. Um, but they said they lost half their camera roll when they switched iPhones, and they were very upset. I don't know how you lose half and not all. I don't know. It's just an incongruity that I want to flag. Yeah, interesting. Another detail for the consideration of the Midnight Society here they said, I live in North Wales in a place called Conway. The bridge is located in a place called Tan Lan. Tan, T-A-N dash L-A-N. About 15 minute drive away and I've been there. Okay, so I Google Maps this whole situation. Oh, hell yeah. The only place that I can find in the UK, and it is in Wales, called Tan Lan. Okay. Or Tan Lan, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Was an hour drive away and south of Conway. Oh. The other location that we were talking about prior, based on descriptions and everything, put Conwy about seven to eight miles west of the bridge. What? So when you kind of draw a map of these three locations, you right. end up with like a very narrow, very tall backwards seven. And so, I don't know. It's another thing I wanted to flag for my own personal theory, which I'm sure you can start to suss out by now. But like, there's a few inconsistencies throughout these stories that I'm trying to pluck on. Mm. But suffice to say, though, there's some very compelling footage of the tag Somebody went down there. They saw it all there. The biggest note is that they did not smell the smell that was described earlier, which makes sense because human feces I mean, takes about a year to biodegrade. And dang, it takes a whole year? Something like that. Something like that. Well, to, to get to a point where it's like it doesn't reek. Right, yeah. So that kind of helps us Wait, it'll smell a for a whole year? That's, I mean, it takes a year to biodegrade. I don't know how long it takes oh, to stop okay. smelling. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. Biodegrade at, at, at most a year. A year yeah. And so from that, we can start to figure out, okay, well then somebody must have been fumbling around in that bridge during Nobility Scooter's time, right? Yeah. There's no smell in their first visit. They come back a few years later. No smell in the second visit. Third visit with a single friend. Now there's a smell. Uh, you know, so something's active during this time window. And Someone's then 10 years later. taking poops. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, it's just something to think about as we start to approach these theories. This episode of Red Web is sponsored by HelloFresh. Whether your resolution this year is to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three simultaneously. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. Each HelloFresh box is packed with farm fresh ingredients and everything arrives pre-proportioned right to your doorstep for less hassle and less wasted food. And you can look to HelloFresh wholesome health forward options like over 30 calorie smart and protein smart recipes each week. I know that I really enjoy their protein smart options because Fredo and I have both been hitting the gym, Christian, and uh, it's been fruitful, especially when we are being fueled by HelloFresh's protein options uh, I made the garlicky fried chicken sandwich not too long ago. Ooh. Every recipe is a banger. Every that time. Sounds good. I'm hungry now. Yeah, I'll make you one. Come over. I got some HelloFresh. I also love that it's all pre-proportioned. I hate the grocery store. I hate wasting food. You get what you need. We order the four, so it's to feed four folks, and there's two of us, me and my fiance, so we got two dinners, a lunch and a dinner, you know, however you want to split it, folks. If you're interested, Task Force, and I think you are, go to HelloFresh.com slash RedWebFree and use promo code RedWebFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash RedWebFree with code RedWebFree. Breakfast is the most important meal. All right, let's get on top of it. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. This episode of Red Web is sponsored by Rocket Money. Do you ever feel like your subscriptions are taking over your life? You got a thousand of them floating around, just like twirling around your head, and you can't really get a grasp of all of them? Well, we're all subscribed to something these days. And guess what? There's a superhero in town that's called Rocket Money. 
Rocket Money is the personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your monthly spending, and helps you lower your monthly bills all in one convenient place. You can see all your subscriptions in that very same app. And if you see something that you don't want, you can cancel it with a tap right there, again, in the app. Rocket Money will do it for you. You don't have to bother hopping on the phone, trying to negotiate with anybody, having them go, well, we'll give you a deal. No, Rocket Money, do the business. Thank you. I really enjoy Rocket Money. Again, I love monitoring my spending, making sure that in this inflationary environment that I'm not overspending on something or spending on something that I'm not even using. That happens way more than I'd like to admit, and I get very stressed out about it. So Rocket Money makes it nice and convenient. I know that um, I'm only paying for the things I use. I don't have to worry about extraneous expenditures. And the fact that you can monitor all your credit cards in one space just gives you transparency on your spending, which I think is super helpful, especially for a young adult going into life, all these things you got to pay for. It makes it very easy. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members on an average $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash redweb. That's rocketmoney.com slash redweb. And just in case you want to type it in, I'll go a little slower. It's rocketmoney.com slash redweb. In fact, I know I'm doing it out of order, but that, that just leads me right into one of the probably more prominent, more honestly, more straightforward theories. And it is a very popular one. Is that simply somebody li was living in this space? That's I someone mean, experiencing homelessness was yeah, just so using this as so. shelter. Yeah, it's interesting though that that like this is, this place was visited what four times, and the person wasn't there that we're aware time. of. Yeah, yeah, four times. Yeah, that we're aware of. And yeah, no one was there every single time. You know, and I, I'm sure this like, and this is why I wanted to jump to this theory. It's the one that I'm sure Task Force is like, it's leaping out at them. But there's two or three other theories I want to talk about, but. I mean, a few pieces of evidence here. Um, you know, you have the makeshift bed. You have the restroom with, like, there was a bucket and bag full of feces. There was some paper that were covered in it. So you can imagine a makeshift restroom there. So it implies someone might have been staying there, whether a short period of time or a long period of time is, is kind of part of the mystery. But Nobility Scooter believed that someone would have noticed even a homeless person going missing kind of because these towns are tight knit. Yeah, very tight knit. But considering the state of the bridge and the tunnel, they might not have stayed there for long, and so maybe, you know, their neighbors wouldn't have known about it. You know, it's hard to say. Also, maybe it's not. I mean, probably wouldn't be a homeless person. Oh? A child homeless person? Well, because you talked about how the town was so small and everyone knew there was one person without a shelter. Sure. So then, I mean, there was only one. Yeah, I mean, you got people that drift. You got so. small town theory. You got you definitely have people that drift. You have maybe less tight knit towns in the area. Yeah. You have maybe someone hitching a ride on the train and hops off. You know, like it's it's there's a lot of vectors here for the possibility sure. of of someone lacking a residence needing to find some. It's such a unique place to go, though. You know what stands out to me now? It is a very unique place to go, and and, and definitely less than ideal, uh, given it's kind of like, not in the middle of nowhere, but it's not close to stuff. Yeah. It's also unhealthy and pitch dark. I do want to say, though, when Nobility Scooter Christian got in there, they busted open the bolt. So was this place locked? Did somebody that was oh, entering this place have yeah. the key? Because the there was a padlock down there. There was. Well, so, so yeah, it was bolted. From the outside. That's my understanding from reading the story. That's a very good question. I don't know. Because uh, the, the story, they don't... I don't think they said anything specifically about breaking a lock. They used tools to open the manhole cover. Okay. So they, they had something to break bolts, but that doesn't mean they did break bolts? If they did, I don't think they said that they did. I think the only thing that they mentioned actually doing was using tools to open the manhole cover. Gotcha. I mean, that would make sense. And... And then that brings us back to the lock that you saw, Fredo, in one of the photos that was within the bridge. Maybe that is what was locking the bridge and that somebody else had had officially broken their way in. Yeah. And that otherwise, due to age, rust, or other reasons, this thing was kind of wedged. All right, so we convened off air. Christian's going to take a look into the bolt situation because yeah. I might just grab that from my own theory here coming up a little bit. <laughs> I'm scooping up, you know, ingredients for my recipe. Yeah. Anyway, that's just something we noticed, but to continue on a little bit here, you know, obviously someone was residing in some way for some period of time. Does it mean that it falls into the, this theory? Perhaps. There's another theory that could use this as well. 
But the only real wrinkle is that there did not appear to be a long-term stay in this bridge, perhaps because of the health risks from the dust, but Nobility Scooter felt that there were plenty of other locations to take shelter in this area. And I think that's kind of the only thing that we can really lean on here is this person went to this bridge, obviously tagged it, and if they're familiar with the area, they would be in the know as to, was this the only place like somebody was desperate or yeah. were there other options that somebody could find safe shelter in? Yeah, the living conditions doesn't seem great. So that's the that's the other thing, right? And that kind of lends itself to like, you don't see a mass amount of like food or water or like a major setup, essentially. This seems like just like a, it's set up for like, that's the span of like a night. Yeah. You know? A little creepy hangout. Yeah. For a lot of ways. Not necessarily like I'm here for like a month. This is where I'm living. Yeah. Which now leads us to a pretty common theory in that the bridge was the location of a crime. Given the blood and knife located in the open space of the tunnel, it's possible that a crime may have taken place here or nearby here and that someone fled here to hide or get away or whatever have you. Yeah. Nobility Scooter pointed out that the manhole to enter the bridge was pretty out of the way. An average person would have had to try to find it. You couldn't just stumble into this. Yeah. So someone needed to look for it. That said, Nobility Scooter found it, but maybe they're just kind of like, you know, obviously like a, an explorer. Yeah, but it does it does kind of like pull away from the whole like maybe like drifters use this area, right? Because it's mm -hmm. so random, maybe a little bit secluded. Yeah, like and a it temporary like, safe house. Yeah, it seems like people are visiting this not frequently. Yeah. What's so weird is that the timeline that we have so far, Nobility Scooter found this place. All this stuff is in is is already there. The chair, the images, this, that, the other. They come back supposedly years later after making this Reddit post, they go two days later. And then the scene is the same, except for now a condom is missing. Or excuse me, that happens on the second visit. But either way, they go there. Let's just jump to the second revisit because that's where things change. Okay, so a couple years and 15 days later, the scene is different. Yeah. Smells different. A condom went missing. A knife is now added. And so it feels like if this was a crime situation, why would somebody come back to this spot if it was that temporary? Like, I don't know, just a, just a wrinkle I mean, I'm thinking not about. There's blood for crime, though. Yeah. And then, I don't know, like, it's just weird that this person was there while this location was still evolving slightly. But then the scene stopped developing sometime after that. So, I don't know, maybe it's just serendipitous timing. Either way, coming back to the theory, if someone were to commit a crime, they might be desperate enough to hide in this location. Or, Nobility Scooter's theory was that a criminal was using this bridge as a place to hide out temporarily. Or maybe store nefarious items. Who knows? Smuggling they, stuff. They really miss the, they got lucky with the timing. You know I mean? Yeah, right. Right. You're, you're there while it's active, but you missed the crime. That could have been dangerous. Yeah, you go down there, you see like 10 he was a kilos. I don't know how cocaine's measured. Ten right, right. Kilos of bricks of cocaine. Mm -hmm. You're like, uh oh, this is a whole pallets. I think. Yeah, yeah. Usually yeah. Pallets. Slabs. That's so much. <laughs> <laughs> now coming back to Nobility Scooter's take on this particular theory, they thought that the knife placement seemed purposeful. That it was in a place that could be quickly grabbed for somebody who was like in there, and then if somebody were to come in looking for them, they could immediately grab the knife and hide. And that they would be in a spot that would be tucked away. And so if somebody were to go deeper, they could ah, attack. There's a lot of assumptions within that, but it's something to, to think about. Now, what is interesting is, is while researching this, Jillian went on a deep dive. And while trying to find a possible crime to attach this theory to, during the time period of 2009 to 2013, she came across an organized crime group in Wales called the Outlaws. Members of this motorcycle gang were caught dealing cocaine in 2009 by oh the pallet God. loads. Oh my God, cocaine. There it is. Yeah, Holy. you predicted it. I'm telling you. But they, they, specifically, they were dealing in 2009 in the Colwyn Bay and Old Colwyn area. So they were in this location. So it's not a far-fetched idea to think that this was either a temporary storing spot for their goods yeah. or that someone was like, listen, I'm going to wait till midnight. You know when you hear these like crime theft stories they're like by the old willow tree i'll store a note <laughs> at the first knocking yeah. of the crow at the first daylight you know it, someone's got to be hidden somewhere to make that happen maybe that's this is true. the hidey hole that's true 
I mean, yeah. I mean, criminals are looking for very, like, secluded areas, and that's very secluded. And sure, maybe they have one of the lower level thugs to go into the <laughs> right. dusty area and, like, just wait out with, you know, for a drop off or something. Yeah. And despite how dark this location is, one of the photos from the second photo album actually shows, and it was their last photo on the way out to never return. They, they, there was a slit where they could see out and they could yeah. see the highway. They could see kind of the beachy area. And so it's possible that this was in fact a little hideout, just specifically in, in someone in a hideout, you know, might need to spend their time in a way doing something, you know, whether it be going to the toilet or the other thing. Anyway, that's, that's the crime theory. It's interesting. It compels me. Dang it. But it doesn't satiate me. Huh. Now, of course, there are, we're plucking on some common threads, and I think both of these theories are totally viable. There is a very simple alternative that plucks on this very same threads. Jillian was very coy about this one, and is that, you know, another theory is that the person that went under the bridge just had some peculiar interests, that they might have been an odd individual, and that they felt this was the only place that they could practice whatever these interests were privately. Fetish stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah, there's just no way to assume someone's living situation. They could be living with family and sharing a room or whatnot. And they just have some very particular tastes. So, yeah, yeah I could see that. Because the only thing we have I'm seeing my zines, is, dude. This is, there's, you know, some heavy sexual stuff here. Sure. And some very fecal stuff, too. Yeah. But that leads me now to my scattered, but I don't know theory of my own, which is that perhaps this was a very low level ARG or just someone telling a compelling story using a real location. Oh, that, that. that there are contrived elements potentially with the dust and with the scene developing and, and then suddenly not developing. I think finding a chair in a dark corner is always intriguing enough for a story. And yeah. so one could easily place a scene there, make a scene viable in this location and then it becomes real, and then you tag it, and the story kind of unfolds beyond that. And again, I, I, I can't remember them all now, so that's why I kind of flagged them along the way, but there's a few things that make me think that it's possible that, yes, it's a real location, but it was seasoned a little bit, that maybe zested up to make more of a compelling story. Whether the chair was there alone, or whether the scene was purely a, a void in a bridge that became a scene, I, I don't right. know, but... I don't think that that takes away from the creepy factor of it. Christian, I actually want to jump to you for a second as somebody who lived this story real time. If you want to like kind of, again, I don't know if that deflates the story at all, but I think you, it's you speaking to being in the moment as the story unfolded mm -hmm. will kind of share to the value even of a contrived story. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling Trevor and Alfredo before we started that I remember when this was first posted back then and I followed the updates live and you know, I remember when they were describing the scene and what was there and whatnot, it did sound very manufactured. Mm -hmm. It was very hard to believe. And then what really sealed it was when they followed up with the photos. Yeah. And that's where I was like, oh, there's something here. But to your point, it very well still could be contrived and they just made the photos to help sell the story. But yeah, I remember at the time, and even if you go back and look at the comments, so many people are like, oh, this is so, this is wild. What are the, like, you have to tell us more. Give us updates, give us updates. And so that's very likely. But yeah, at the time it was a lot of, this is very hard to believe. And then the photos were like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, a little whiplash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. And, and there's something just to the idea of urban exploration anyway. Yeah. Your mind goes in so many different directions because much like we think, internet mysteries are the kind of new genre, new frontier of unsolved mysteries. I think urban exploration is a totally not, I wouldn't say new, but totally unfamiliar. It's not very popular, but so like when it does hit the zeitgeist, you're kind of going, yeah. that's weird. That's unsettling. It's, yeah. it's so liminal spaces. It's recognizable, but completely alien. And the, that's and the, what this is. I, I completely agree. The thing is too, um, I knew a guy that did some tagging. I could tell he was going somewhere <laughs> when he did a little tisk. You hear that? Mm. I Listen, knew a guy who did some tagging. Side. And when you do tag, when, when when he did tag. <laughs> you heard about a guy. I heard about a guy. Yeah. And when he did tag. That'll stand up. It was, 
you know, there's a lot of urban exploration to get to these locations. Yeah, yeah. In which you could tag. You know what I mean? So you kind of learn a little bit of like these weird locations in the city or That's countryside. Wild. And so, so like, yeah, you you come across these locations that are just like, oh, I don't know. I should go down there or whatnot. So I've heard, I've heard, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. That's what the rumor mill does say. But if you're trying to reach like the side of something or whatever to tag on it, and it's like you got to find like a way to get up there. Yeah, I'm looking or, at these tags sometimes going like, what Spider Man ass thing yeah, just exactly, happened here exactly. to make that happen? <laughs> yeah. And so naturally, awesome. so naturally, you just kind of go and find these weird little like secluded tunnel areas and just go, oh, tag on that. That's like, that's a clean wall to tag on. And I get my tag fix in and I don't, I won't be in trouble. I don't, yeah. got, there's no cameras down here. There's no, nobody else down here. So it could have been an area where they like, were looking to kind of just tag up. Although there isn't like any mass marks in terms of just like big canvas pieces or anything like that, which is what you would usually see if it was like a, um, a bunch of taggers, um, going down there. So I don't know, but like, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you got young kids that are just like, yeah, I just want to tag around. And if, and then you just kind of get into this rhythm of like, oh, that's just a blank wall that like is secluded. Mm. Sure, I'll tag on it. I'm curious, man. I, you know what's interesting as you say that is looking at the photo or video, whatever it was, of Nobility Scooter's actual tag. It's got that style to it. It's got that art style. Yeah, it does. It is you can see beautiful. the lines and the, the, yeah, the text. And so I'm like, this man tags. And what does that say? I think that puts another little checkpoint in my little theory, but I want to give the theory over to you now because I think like you might be onto something with the idea of like urban exploration and tagging. This could have been somebody who took their tagging to the next degree. They had a story to tell with it that also then highlighted their signature, right? Like yeah. this is not only a, a, a spot I found that I tagged, a virgin spot that's getting tagged, mm -hmm. but now there's a story behind it that brings attention to it. Yeah. And the people that tag, they want attention. You know what I mean? That's why they're... They, they they create their mark, they create their lines, and then and then they tag it out there. So then you, you know, so people be like, oh, that's you know, that's crowns or whatever. And he you know he tags on this tree and this locations and whatnot. And so like, no one tags to not be known. You know, you create your persona and you tag to be known in that like little sphere. And so. I mean, yeah, it doesn't look like someone just was like, all right, this is my handwriting. Like, it's it's got lines to it. It's got fill. Like, so, I don't know. So I've heard. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean. So I've heard. I, I, again, I've heard these rumors. They're flying around. That's what they say. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, urban exploration and tagging kind of go hand in hand. Uh, it's like a natural handshake there because, you're, you know, the things you got to do to get to certain areas. Yeah. So. I could totally, yeah, I could totally see it that they're just like, they just found an area, tagged it, there was a chair there or something like that, and they're like, oh, let's just post this online. And then people, yeah, kind of took it, ran away with it, and they're like, oh, we got a story here. Let's yeah. Kind of feed into just it. Just feed into it. This makes me want to make a Red Web documentary. It's one of those ideas that I never manifest, but I want to call it Tag, You're It, and it's a documentary <laughs> exploring <laughs> urban exploration and all these like liminal spaces. Dude, there, that's a great so, title. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really title. is. I probably wouldn't feature tagging, but I just couldn't resist the title. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's good. But yeah, you like, you know, um, yo, I'm a tagger. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, yeah. I these pieces. And it's like a backlit, all silhouetted out. Like, yeah. who knows these people? I don't know these people. We'll just, yeah. we'll just kind of materialize them because we don't have any contacts in that world. But if we did, it would be a great talking head. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta find that contact. <laughs> No, no, right, you don't have the contact. No, Nobody, I don't. I don't. We don't, I don't know who's. I come. just like I heard of a. Right, right, right. I heard there you go. Mm -hmm. there you go. dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this has been the very interesting, compelling story of. Before you wrap up, oh yes. Just to close the loop oh, right. on the, the <clears throat> bolt conversation. Unfortunately, I don't have much. The I just went back to the original post from Nobility Scooter and read the post. Tried to see the comments, and unfortunately, all they really say is that looking at the manhole cover, they discovered that several tools would be required in order to gain entry and then they say mm. they returned with the necessary equipment and proceeded to unbolt the cover and that's as much detail as we have i'm gonna call that an inconsistency in the narrative and i'm gonna put that in the tag theory column yeah because then who the hell is because you gotta seal it from the outside yeah, yeah. i think they found it and they create a story out of it mm -hmm. a good one wow 
Here we are. Breaking molds and adding theories to the conversation. We don't do that often. No. But when no, we do, it works. It we, it sizzles. Yeah. Which does explain how this is a very rare situation. We have high-res photos and videos mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. I love that. Yeah. But even the photos told on the author. We got three different styles of photos. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. They were very stylized photos, mm -hmm. too. So This person's about art. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God, this was so cool. And I'm so happy that you, Christian, had experienced this live. I, I think that's what I love so much about these internet mysteries is because even if the theory, the leading theory, is that eh, it's not real, it's so personal. You can feel it. You could be a part of it. I That's what I love so much about and why this podcast exists, because internet mysteries are just more tangible, more intriguing. All right. Well, Fredo, I'll see you next week for yet another mystery. Watch your voice. Meow. Yeah.